In this lesson, we will be creating a universal shader deformer that can be used with any kind of render engine in order to manually define the position of texture influence. The basic actions will be demonstrated on a simple plane. Later we will apply the same technique on more complex geometry. Acceptable results will be achieved if you will increase the number of segments. Now we need to retrieve information from the vertices of our object. Convert this parametric object into the polygonal geometry in order to have access to its points. Navigate to Select Menu and execute the Set Vertex Weight command. Decrease the value down to zero and press the OK button. This action will automatically create vertex map tag with 0% of influence. Next we have to morph its weight into another vertex map. This task can be easily accomplished by utilizing pose morph tag. Enable the maps option and leave everything else disabled. Vertex weight map with 0% of influence belongs to base pose, so we have to assign the information with 100% of influence to the new pose. Select the vertex map. Navigate to select menu and execute the set vertex weight command. Increase the value up to 100 and press the OK button. To see how the pose morph affects the vertex maps, you have to lock its attribute manager and select the desired tag. Now you are able to change the settings to your liking and see its influence in the viewport. We can take advantages of the Morph Deformer in order to control this influence very precisely. Make this deformer child of the plane object. Unlock the Attribute Manager and restrict it to the new deformer. Drag and drop the Pose Morph tag into the Morph field of the deformer. Open it up and enable the Animate mode in order to utilize all the powerful shapes from the Fall Off tab. Most of these options are self-explanatory that defines the field of influence. One of the most powerful types is the source shape that works like a proximal shader, which is based on distance dependencies. Create the desired object and drop it to the source link field. It outputs a value based on how far away the surface is from a specified object. Now it's time to expose these colors in the material. This task can be easily accomplished by utilizing vertex map shader that allows rendering vertex map tags as grayscale images. Open it up and drop an appropriate tag into the vertex map field. This specifies that we will be using Morph Deformer to drive the colors of this material. Now it's time to remap these colors to your liking by applying Colorizer Shader on top of the existing vertex map. We can take advantages of the gradient to add some visual diversity in these colors. Or simply choose one of the presets from the large variety of predefined gradients. The main advantage of this technique is that it can be successfully applied to any kind of third-party render engine. We will start with Redshift. Create Redshift material and assign it to the appropriate object. 
navigate to Attribute Manager, and open the shader graph of this material. We can easily expose the colors of Vertex Map, by utilizing Vertex Attribute Node. Drag and drop an appropriate tag, into the Attribute Name field, and connect its output, to the diffuse color of Redshift Material. We can use these colors, as a mix amount of the Color Mix node. Change its first color to black, and use the Noise node, as the second input of the Color Mix. Better results will be achieved, if you will change the Noise type, to Turbulence. We can use the output of Color Mix, as a texture map of the Displacement node. Increase the scale value, up to 20, and connect its output, to the displacement input. We will see how the displacement affects our object, by utilizing Redshift Object Tag. Navigate to Geometry tab, and enable appropriate options. And finally, you have to increase the value of maximum displacement, up to 20. Next, we will use the Arnold Renderer, whose workflow is very similar to the Redshift. Create standard surface. And assign it to the appropriate object. Create a vertex map node, and drop an appropriate tag, into the name field. Connect its output, to the base color of the standard surface. We can use these colors, as a mix amount of the mix node. Use the noise shader, as the second input. Better results will be achieved, if you will increase the scale value. We can use the output of the mix node, as a texture map of the displacement. Decrease the scale value, down to 0.2, and connect its output, to the Arnold displacement. We can add a couple of subdivisions, by utilizing Arnold Parameters tag. Navigate to Subdivision tab, and change the type to Linear. As you probably know, Arnold is not able, to receive information from Cinema 4D textures, but it is worth mentioning, that we can take advantage of the noise falloff, that allows us creating all the powerful noise types from Cinema 4D. Create new material, and assign it to the plane object. Retrieve information from vertices, by using Vertex Map node, and connect its input, to the base color of the standard surface. We can manually define colors of the noise shader, by utilizing the Ramp node. Finally, you can select the Morph Deformer, and change its settings to your liking.
Now it's time to use Cycles 4D. Create diffuse material and assign it to the desired object. Now we have to create an appropriate attribute that will retrieve information from vertex maps. Select the sphere object. Navigate to tags. Cycles 4D tags and apply cycles attribute. Create a new attribute and drop vertex maps into the tag field. Give it an appropriate name and use it as a source of the attribute node. We can use these colors as a mix factor of the color mix node. Change its first color to black and use the noise node as the second input of the color mix. We can use the output of color mix as a texture map of the displacement. Currently, it gives us only the bump effect, so we have to change the displacement method to both in order to use the effect of the bump shading in combination with the displacement. The power of displacement can be altered by utilizing the math node. Change its operation type to multiply and change the second value in order to increase or decrease its influence. We can add a couple of subdivisions by utilizing cycles object tag. Navigate to Displacement tab and change the subdivision type to Linear. In the final part of this tutorial, we will be using Octane Renderer. Create Octane Glossy Material and assign it to the object. Navigate to Attribute Manager and open the Node Editor. Use the Vertex Map node in order to retrieve information from vertices. Activate Object Picker and select an appropriate tag. Connect its output to the diffuse input of the glossy material. You can change these colors to your liking by utilizing the gradient node. Now let's change the falloff type to the source shape that works as a proximal shader. Create the helix spline and drop it to the source link field. The value of sample distance is too high, so you can decrease it down to 7. Sample detail defines the accuracy with which the sample points will emulate the shape of the spline. Very large values will take longer to render, but will replicate the exact shape of the spline. Let's animate our helix by utilizing Mo Spline. Change its mode to spline and use the helix as the source spline. You can hide the original spline and use most spline as the new source. We can create the dependency between the sample detail and the end value of the most spline in order to optimize the render time. Right click on the end value, navigate to expressions, set driver, select the morph deformer, right click on the sample details. Navigate to Expressions, Set, Driven. Now you are able to animate the end distance and the sample details will be automatically changed that will optimize the render time.